So in ICLO, there's a number of different techniques, uh, which we showed in one of the previous clips. But uh, as I mentioned before, some of the techniques are translated as principles. So there are six principal techniques, which are actually literally called principle number one, principle number two, principle number three, etc., etc. In Japanese, it's called ikkyo, nikkyo, sankyo, yonkyo, etc. Ikkyo being ichi means one in Japanese. Kyo means uh, the principle, so ikkyo, the first principle, nikkyo, ni two in Japanese, nikkyo, the second principle, so on and so forth. So you can see them as a way to understand how the mechanics of a technique work. In the end, you can also mix them up. You can obviously use them in any way you need. But uh, to begin with, they're set as these principles with a certain beginning, certain end, so you would ha get a good hang of the Aikido techniques. Some of them will have uh, connections. There are some similarities. The beginnings are uh, most of the times very similar. But to get a good feeling, to get the start off, we'll start with the first one called Ikkyo, the first principle. So the Ikkyo we'll look at today is going to be from a Shomenuchi. Now a Shomenuchi uh, can be done in two different ways. It can be done by stepping forward and cutting, or it can be, in a sense, provoked. Uh, so it's more, which is more common in Nivama style, which our style is connected to. So in the way of provoking, I see that the person might attack me, I, I need to do something about this attack, so instead of waiting for him to attack, I initiate and suggest a defensive movement for him so that I, I would have access to his arm. So I step in with the front of my hand towards his head so that he would defend himself. So that looks like this. He defends, so that here brings out the arm, and that arm I'm going to use. Now, as we look at this beginning, first of all, Notice you don't want to go out of your center. Uh, you don't want the hand to be up front because then you will lose the balance, you won't be able to use the hips. So it's not there, but actually your whole body enters. So probably you won't, you'll need to enter not only with the front leg, but also with the back leg. So the whole body moves in, the center moves in. Now here we are equally on the same straight line where it's hard to move him since it's center against center. So I actually have to move a bit to the side and here I already start to move his arm to the side to open up the elbow, to open up this side. If this would be jiu-jitsu, most likely you would be able to, to punch, strike, uh, because he's open here. Also, it's harder for him to reach me. So here I open. Now the elbow opened up. So now I go for the elbow. It's a bit above. So if we look at it, there's a bit of a bone here. So the hand gets stuck next to the bone here and I grab firm around it. So here I'm already holding his center. Then the other hand grabs just above the wrist. Now an oftentimes mistake that people do, they try to force the person down uh, with the arms, but then if I use force, he's going to use counter force, he's going to um, resist. Uh, that brings out a natural resistance. So actually I don't want to go from above, I want to go from below. Using my hips, I want to turn the hips and not push the arm towards him, but slightly towards and through. I guide him through. So now, here, I brought him down. So now there's many different ways to, to bring the person down, but one of the main ways is actually to go diagonally down with the whole center pushing the shoulder to the ground, going down on your own knees. And here, the pin also can be applied in a few different ways. So uh, first of all, if I'm holding it at the shoulder line, I want to push the elbow down and forward so that he wouldn't be able to come up with it. Uh, my knees are wide apart, feet together. There's also some styles prefer to push the knee inside the, the armpit so that I would have a better connection with him. Uh, but although here, if he's flexible, he might uh, actually have enough space to go up right here, especially with the hips. So uh, one way to avoid that, although that's also not universally always working, but actually is to bring the, belt, the elbow back and to, give a, to make a big angle here. So my, my Yuki Martinez is very flexible, so he would be able probably to go out of this as well. But for most people, uh, they don't have the flexibility in the shoulder, so that should be enough to have the technique done to them. At the same time, uh, also notice this is not a painful 
pin. You could obviously apply pain, pain but this immobilization is normally painless, which is an interesting variation since you can hold the person down without using your force, without hurting him, but still having him pinned down. And the last thing to, to be able to do that, again, don't push down with your shoulders because then he can apply force to push you up through the shoulders, but rather stay in your center, just hold the arms in front of you and hold the person with the center. Just to mention a couple of more things before we finish up, so for your curiosity, if the person is attacking with a strike, uh, uh, the ending will be the same, but the beginning obviously will be different. When he raises the arm, that's the weak point where I can actually come in. So here, I hold him, I come in close enough, grab the elbow, and I continue through. So that's how you would do it if the person is uh, attacking you. And also what we did, this was a variation called omote, so the front variation, since I went through the front. Now, uh, ikkyo can be done both in omote, which means the front, and also the back version, based on the situation and what you need. So here, if we're looking at the way we did before, the back leg steps in, my toes go toe to toe, arm grabs again the elbow. So this is more of a receptive way so instead of pushing him down, actually cut, turn around, give space to him. I don't force him down, I'd rather let him in. And I cut and give the space for him and go down into the immobilization. So it's rather not forcing, it's more giving space.